The Sahara Desert, an endless sea of sand. Its vast expanse measures 9.2 million square kilometers, meaning it's not that much smaller than the United States. Temperatures average 30 degrees Celsius and have reached as high as 58 degrees. Its forever shifting sand dunes can reach heights as engulfing as 450 meters. And it's dry, very dry. Half of the desert receives less than one inch of rain each year, making it almost impossible for life to exist. Yet still, thousands of years ago, this very same desert was green. Rivers carved valleys through grasslands. Lakes shimmered across what's now endless dust. Hippos, crocodiles and giraffes roamed freely. This was known as the African Humid Period. What now seems like a fantasy though, is slowly becoming a reality, both by natural forces and with a helping hand from humans. To understand why the Sahara Desert will be green again, we first need to discuss when the Sahara Desert was green, why it turned into the desert we know today, and finally, how humans are helping to make that process faster through community-driven efforts such as Planet Wild. This is why the Sahara Desert will be green again. To understand why the Sahara was once green, we have to zoom out far beyond Africa to see how the Earth moves around the Sun. Our planet doesn't spin in a perfect circle. It wobbles and tilts in predictable patterns known as Milankovitch cycles. One of these, called axial precession, happens roughly every 26,000 years. It slowly changes which parts of the Earth receives the strongest sunlight throughout different seasons. About 12,000 years ago, that wobble aimed more summer sunlight at the northern hemisphere that warmed the landmass of North Africa, intensifying the monsoon that blows north from the Atlantic and the Indian Ocean. Rain began to fall over the Sahara, at first seasonally and then year-round. Grass spread across the desert, followed by acacia trees and wetlands. At its peak, the Sahara's largest lake, Mega Lake Chad, covered over 350,000 square kilometers, roughly the size of modern-day Germany. Lake Chad remains today, but it's much, much smaller. Multiple satellite scans have shown the complex water system that lies underneath the Sahara. In 2015, radar images taken from a Japanese Earth observation satellite spotted this ancient river system beneath the surface winding its way from more than 500 kilometers inland towards the coast. For roughly 6,000 years, from 10,000 BCE to 4,000 BCE, the Sahara was alive. But as we know, this didn't last forever. Around 5,000 BCE, the planet's orbit shifted again. The Northern Hemisphere's summers became slightly cooler and the monsoon retreated south. Rainfall stopped gradually, first in the north, then deeper and deeper into Africa. As grass died, bare soil reflected more sunlight, drying the air even further. It created a feedback loop. Less rain, less vegetation, more heat. By 3000 BCE, the once green Sahara had turned into the vast desert that we know today. Civilizations that once lived there moved towards water sources like the Nile and the Mediterranean. But that transformation from Greenlands to desert wasn't unique. When scientists drilled into ancient lake beds, they found alternating layers of mud and dust. Evidence that the Sahara has switched between green and dry phases many times before. Each cycle follows the same rhythm tied to Earth's orbit. And if science isn't enough proof, Countless carvings have been found depicting a time when the region was a savanna with animals like giraffes, elephants, and cattle. Just quickly, if you're enjoying this video so far, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps me out. So yeah, the vast sea of sand that we know as the Sahara today will once again be green. It's not a matter of if, but when, 
and that's likely to be in around 15,000 years. This time is different however, as humans are no longer just passengers in this natural process. Along the southern edge of the Sahara lies the Sahel, a belt of dry grassland stretching from Senegal to Sudan. In 2007, the African Union adopted the Great Green Wall Initiative. Essentially, it's a unified effort to restore 100 million hectares of degraded land by 2030, store 250 million tonnes of carbon and create 10 million jobs. It's not a literal wall of trees, it's more a mosaic of thousands of local projects spreading like green islands across 22 countries. In Burkina Faso and Mali, Zai pits trap rainwater and compost, turning dust into fertile soil. In Ethiopia and Senegal, farmers plant crops among trees to cool and rebuild the soil. So the question is, is it working? Well, yeah. As things stand, over 20 million hectares have been restored which is below the pace needed to reach the 2030 target. However, an accelerator program was launched in 2021 to put them back on track. These sort of restorative projects are exactly what my friends at Planet Wild helped to accelerate. And in fact, one of their projects contributed to the Great Green Wall in Senegal. This segment is taken from their video report, Inside the Food Forest Revolution, and it shows exactly how they contributed to that. Here in Senegal, it all starts by planting a variety of dense and fast-growing pioneer trees around a plot of land to create protection from wind, sun and storms for other plants to follow. This is called a living fence. Next, you place nitrogen-fixing trees at specific distances to make the soil fertile. Then you add fruit and nut trees as well as vines and shrubs that all together create a cover of shade for the remaining topsoil. These papaya trees are only two years old and already five to six meters high. That is the power of the tropical sun. They now create a beautiful tree cover to create shade for other crops that can be planted underneath them. This is one of their many projects around the world and it shows that, given a little nudge, ecosystems rebound faster than you may expect. Every month the Planet Wild community funds a nature protection project, whether it's saving endangered species, protecting our oceans or restoring forests. Think of it as crowdfunding, but for nature. They document all of their projects through video reports that you can find right here on YouTube to show exactly what was done, where and what changed. They have projects all over the world from the US, Germany, Mexico to the project in Senegal that I was referring to earlier. But Planet Wild isn't your typical conservation organisation. It's a collaborative effort where everyone, including you, can help their journey to restore the planet. Their growing community has exceeded 14,000 people. For their membership, you can give whatever you want because no amount is too small. You can start for as little as the price of a sandwich because every single dollar counts in protecting nature. The first 100 people to sign up using my code, EXPLAINED11, will get their first month paid for by me and you can either click the link in the description or scan this QR code now. But that's not the best part. Those who sign up to Planet Wild will immediately have a real tangible impact in nature and will see the results in less than 30 days on YouTube. There's no catch and you can cancel easily at any time. As is evident with the Sahara, nature moves in cycles and it will be green again. But we still need restorative efforts like the ones from Planet Wild to help struggling communities and ecosystems to thrive who don't have thousands of years to wait. If you've enjoyed this video, I know for a fact you'll enjoy one of these two videos from Planet Wild showing some of their other projects like the one in Senegal.